Chapter 14 Death Following You Mr. Aga's lawyer reassured him, calling the matter trivial. He inquired if he could obtain the original file from Aga's house. Aga agreed, instructing the lawyer to visit his house, where Zishan knew the file's location and could provide access. The lawyer promised to do his best to secure Mr. Aga's release, possibly even on the same day. Upon returning home, the lawyer encountered Zishan, who had expected his father's instructions. The lawyer introduced himself, and Zishan immediately recognized him. Zishan agreed to provide the file, claiming he knew its whereabouts. Yes, I know. Zishan looked at the lawyer carefully and said, I will give that file to you. Zishan immediately took out the keys and opened the drawer, but the file was not there. Meanwhile, Zishan's mother entered Aga's room. The lawyer stood up and said salam. I am Mr. Aga's lawyer and have come to collect a file. What? Mrs. Aga said in surprise. Another lawyer had come before you and there was an inspector with him that he was Aga's lawyer and he needed an important file, so he took a file out of the drawer. The entire country quaked with the thunderous explosions of bombs. Amidst the chaos and pandemonium, no one seemed to have a clue about what to do next. Subversive elements ran amok, torching buildings and inciting riots. Looting became rampant. The nation teetered on the brink of anarchy and disorder. Despite the government's assurances, the situation spiraled out of control. High-level meetings convened daily, yet they yielded no tangible results. The saboteurs held the people in their grip, orchestrating bombings on one side and fomenting mayhem and violence on the other. This tactic effectively diverted the attention of the police and depleted their resources, preventing them from effectively pursuing the saboteurs. Aga still languished behind bars, denied bail. One day, when Zishan visited him, he brought along a fresh newspaper. Placing it before his father, he exclaimed, Dad, this is the news I've been waiting for. They've apprehended the saboteurs responsible for the blasts in Peshawar, Karachi, and Balochistan. They suspect the involvement of a particular foreign country. This is the headline from Lahore, and the Federal Minister of Law and Parliamentary Affairs has confirmed the arrest of the individuals behind these bombings. Their tactics and materials strongly suggest foreign involvement, possibly from neighbor country. The news also mentions that foreigners engaged in anti-national activities will be deported. Dad, doesn't this mean that we'll finally have some peace? Zishan inquired hopefully. With a sigh, Aga responded, Son, such news appears in the newspapers every day, and politicians make similar statements. The reality unfolding in our country suggests that this news is nothing more than momentary solace. My happiness will come when there is genuine peace in our land. Peace means no more explosions, no more killings, and no need for such news. People will understand on their own that the saboteurs have been defeated. Their conversation was interrupted by the arrival of the jailer. After instructing Zishan to return home, he somberly informed Mr. Aga that Inspector Ahmed had been shot and killed. Inspector Ahmed had been returning home from duty when, upon entering his street, he was ambushed and shot dead with a rifle. A note found in his pocket, seemingly written by a child, read, We are aware of your meetings with the saboteurs. Beware, death follows you.